The glint of polished automobiles flickered across the premises of Civic Center with a magnetic shimmer that ushered out its eminent passengers. The gathering was a knack of repetition of smiling memory and reawakening of the till of undying glory, which were associated with the late former governor of Undo State, Dr. Olusegun Kokumo Agagu, died in September 13, 2013. Late Chief Agagu's monumental stride while alive has successfully made this date a descriptive anecdote that rejuvenated the minds on the immortality of Agagu's name, which is boldly written on the golden plaque of Nigeria five years after its demise. The yearly memorial lectures, which were organized by Olushegu Agagu Foundation, had practically reconnated him and literally affirmed his middle name, Kumo, through an intellectual discourse which he truly stood for while alive. This fifth edition of his memorial lecture at the Civic Center was no doubt a springboard of the previous episodes with the command of excellence and parade of eminence. Preceded by a cocktail session, everyone reminisced on Agagu's epic sojourn in the political and academic corridor as they sipped on their glasses of fruit wine at the cocktail stand. The focus soon shifted on the business of the day at the main bowl of the venue. Festooned with black ornaments with a conspicuous portrait of the late icon at the center stage, the lively hall blistered with powerful men and women who have made their parts in their chosen careers. In his opening remarks, the chairman of the occasion and the emir of Kano, Mohammed Lamido Sanusi, maintained that Ondo State has the highest number of educated Nigerians, which confers on them the responsibility of engendering public discourse that will change the trajectory of our leadership direction. And as we approach elections in Nigeria, these topics become important. I'm not just talking about having women in political position. When we talk about women in politics, there is a total absence of women in politics in the sense that women issues are not even discussed. I do not recall any debate by anyone seeking to be a governor or a senator or a member of the house or the president. Where I have heard issues now here today is not just about we want more women governors, more women senators, more women legislators, I think more women ministers. But we want more women who are going to fight for women issues. Unlike the previous lectures, this year's topic with the theme, Women, a Needed Force in Politics and Polity, specifically centered on gender equality, deliberate efforts to end discrimination against women, girl-child education, and economic empowerment of women to enable them participate actively in nation building. Accomplished women who are intellectually savvy were drafted on board to do adequate justice to the topic. They were Joyce Branda, former president of Malawi, Chief Mrs. Folake Sholanke, first female senior advocate of Nigeria, and Professor Sheila Tlu, former UN director of HIV AIDS and former Botswana minister of health. Delivering the lecture, former President Banda noted that women occupied about 69% in Rwandan parliament, which is the highest in the world, while Nigeria has none, and called for a change of this scenario, even as we approach the 2019 elections. Women in the country, economic and financial capacity.
us to find it difficult to compete equally with their male counterparts. Those sentiments I cited earlier in the top 20 for women's participation in parliament have affirmative action to fight against the economic injustices women face. Therefore, economic empowerment is key to promote women's participation in political empowerment. In the same vein, Professor Tulu admitted that it is only when women are united on common front that they can do exploits for their nation. When women lead and they really concentrate on issues that are happening and women together, they can bring about change. Because the change that the chiefs are bringing now at community level is the change that will be sustainable. We are really looking at sustainable development and we know that if that change has only been bigger some of the babies going underground. On her part, the 86-year-old Mrs. Sholanke was of the view that without empowerment, it is difficult for women to have the capacity to add value to good governance. I have advocated that regardless of the role of man or woman in the society, in the context of what God did in the Garden of Eden, Women can both be rely on the biblical verse to play gender equality anytime, anywhere. And it is when women enjoy full equality with men that the needed force of women in politics and the quality can be achieved. Cascade of comments from dignitaries at the occasion all tailored towards gender equality and women participation in nation building. Representing the Ondo State Governor, the Deputy Governor, Honorable Agbola Ajayi, maintained that the state's government has put in motion the requisite machinery that would ensure the sustainability of late Chief Agagu's laudable project in Ondo State. The present administration, we have also known that the only way that we can make this matter happen in this family is to continue to embark on all the abandoned projects that it was doing before. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that yes, we are facing with a lot of financial crisis, but we have started from where we start. The popular road and this community part of the road has been completed. If the job was abandoned eight years after we left, that road has been completed by the present administration. Update on the Olushagu Agagu Foundation was given by the deceased daughter. Sholakpe Almond, while his son, Feyagagu, thanked everyone for their presence. The caliber of guests at the memorial lecture was not unexpected, going by the pedigree of the subject matter and his footprint on the sands of time. From the first memorial lecture, which was held in Ibado in 2014, to the recent one, the yearly event has practically celebrated the name and undying memory of the late former governor and minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So far, respected African leaders have been on ground every year to handle the annual intellectual discourse with various topics that are outlined to shape the African countries. The annual event has continually created a robust platform for Agagu's disciples, who regularly make it a day to recall their memorable encounter with the former governor in a loud whisper without the use of a microphone. May the soul of the dead departed Dr. Lushem Kokumo Akagu, C.O.N. continue to rest in perfect peace. Yeah. Vivid memory of Agagu came to fore at the rendering of his favorite songs, which drew the curtain on the fifth edition of the annual lecture. Red Carpet TV spoke with the widow, son, and some of the guests. We will continue to remember him for his love for us and for humanity. We will continue to remember him for his kindness, for his generosity. We always continue, 
Yeah. We'll always continue to remember him for what he has always been. As we've said, his legacies, his uh, forthrightness, his support, and all the great things he's been, been able to do for us as a good father. Uh, we'll in, always continue to miss him. He's left an indelible mark in all our lives. When we see his legacies, we are happy. When we hear the comments of people about him, we are comforted. As a family, we think that those virtues for which he did and that are being celebrated now are things that we are proud of. These are virtues that the family will continue to, to cherish. Now, five years on, I'm so impressed with the way the family has carried on, as well as with his wife, uh, Funke, you know, who has really been very brave in carrying on uh, this uh, lecture series in his memory. And I wish them well. Today's uh, topic is very fundamental to women, and it was well treated by the three guest speakers. And the Emir was just a delight. So I pray that the foundation will continue to thrive. He laid the foundation for good governance in Ondo State. And I have said it once that I think he came before his time. That is why his legacy is still on. He is a man that is given to the service of human beings. He devoted his life to the upliftment of the people of Rondo State. He worked hard for it and he died in the process. The Dr. Gagu is a song that will never end. It's a song that will be on the lips of everybody till eternity. Because he was such a good person. He was a liberal man, a broad hearted person. A highly cerebral man. He never said anything negative about anybody. And that's what I learned, great lesson I learned for him. Don't say anything negative about people. And always try and give a fair hearing to every situation. He did say, as his mission statement, as his vision, as his focus, that he will live on those state better than he met it. And that he has achieved. He is a song that will never end. In one of his interviews, I said in that interview, my message is that you should do everything in your power to think about society, to work for society, do everything for the upliftment of society. Once you do all this, you will always be remembered for your actions. And it is therefore not surprising that five years after his demise, Nigerians from all walks of life are still gathered to discuss Olusha Gwagagu and his contribution to nationhood, his contribution to the development of Nigeria, his contribution to the development of his dear own state. We are all very proud of his achievement, we are proud of his achievement, we are proud of his activities as governor of Ondo State. He was indeed a great man and his legacies continue to speak for him today. From the Red Carpet TV crew, we congratulate the Onushagu Agagu Foundation and the entire family on the success of the 5th Memorial Lecture.